Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the long transmission lines. So we know that the, if the length is greater than 200 kilometers, then in that case, it is better to go for the distributed parameters. So distributed parameters are used to get more accuracy. The reason is that we know the parameters will go on changing at every point of the transmission line. So if you are taking the lumped parameters, there is a chance that we may get some error. So for analysis of this part, let us take the basic conditions which you have to follow so that the analysis will be easy. First thing is I am taking my receiving end voltage is taken as reference. This is for the reference for measuring the distances. So wherever the distance parameter comes, I am starting from the receiving end, I move towards the sending end. And I have, let us assume that the small z is the series impedance per unit length. So this will have R plus JXL. So this value will be there R plus JXL. And Y is the shunt admittance per unit length, the shunt admittance per unit length, I am representing by G plus JB. So let us take it as small g, G plus JB. So now, if you want to calculate the total value of the impedance, total value of impedance will be this small z, that means impedance per unit length, you have to multiply with the length of the transmission line, where this L is the length of the line. So length of the line. So you have to multiply with small z with L to get the total series impedance. And the value of capital Y or the total value of shunt admittance, I can calculate by calculating the admittance per unit length multiplied by the length. So this will be total shunt admittance. So for calculation purpose, let us assume I am taking a long transmission line at a particular instant. Let us assume this is my series parameter. There is some shunt parameter. So like this, the length goes on varying. So at different points, there will be series parameter also as well as shunt parameter also. Let us assume at the receiving end, I am taking the voltage as VR and the receiving end current is IR. Let us assume at a distance of X from the receiving end, I am taking this distance as X. So here the current is equal to I. So and let us assume the voltage is equal to V. So at this point current is equal to I, voltage is equal to V. Now here I am taking some small element, let us assume this elemental length I am taking as delta X. So in this small delta X, let us assume the current because of shunt element, the current will increase because this will become I plus delta I, where delta I is the current passing through the shunt element and voltage because of the series element, because the drop is increasing. So automatically this will become V plus delta V here. So let us take the sending and voltage is equal to Vs and sending and current is equal to Is and the total length of my transmission line is X. Sorry, it will be L with respect to the receiving end. Now this small block, whatever block is here, I am just representing here. So this small block I can represent as a small impedance and there is a shunt element. Shunt element there will be leakage current component or the so two components will be there G plus JB. This shunt element component I am representing by Y multiplied by the delta X. We are taking the distance as delta X. So Y multiplied by delta X gives what is the value of admittance in that. Similarly, this small value of Z multiplied by delta X gives what is the change in the impedance. Let us assume that this side the current is I and the voltage is V. So this side the voltage becomes V plus delta V and the current becomes I plus delta I. Okay, so I am assuming that values of the voltages are V and I at a distance of X from the receiving end. So then as we are moving towards it, let us assume the voltage is increased to V plus delta V and the current is increased to I plus delta X. So here I can write the change in the current delta I, this will be V into Y into delta X because this change in the current came because of this shunt branch element because this is also taking the current because supply current will be the sum of the load current plus current passing through the shunt element. So everyone agree with me. And similar way I can write my value of delta V, the change in the voltage how it came. The change in the voltage came because of the change in the current that is passing through Z into delta X. This is what we agree. So this generally the value of the current is so much high when compared to small change in delta I as the value of this delta I is far far less than 
the value of i so delta i can be neglected so this can be taken as i into z into delta x so let us take this as equation number one so now this equation number one can be written as this will be delta i divided by delta x will be equal to v into y v multiplied by y because this delta x i have brought to delta i and we can also define delta v by delta x from the second one this will be equal to i into z so let us take it as equation number two Gotting it now if we consider the section delta x that means delta x the differential length is very small differential length is very small so uh, that means the delta x is approaching towards zero so this equation number two becomes because delta i by delta x becomes differentiation we already know this so this will become di by dx will be equal to v into y let us take this as equation number three and similarly dv by dx i can write as i into z let us take it as equation number four so now what i am doing i am differentiating equation number four with respect to x and simplifying using equation number three let us see what will happen so if you are differentiating this will become d square v by dx square will be equal to di by dx because i is the variable that vary z is constant so z this i can write as a di by dx we can obtain from equation number two so di by dx is v into y so this will become v into y into z let us take this as equation number five so now the solution for this this is of the form d square v by dx square is equal to v into y into x if you solve this so solving equation number five so the voltage can be obtained by v is equal to a into a to the power of square root of y z into x plus b into a to the power of minus square root of y z into x or this i can write as a u to the power of gamma x plus b e to the power of minus gamma x let us take this as equation number six so where the square root of y z square root of y z so this will be square root of the value of the y is r plus j omega l and the value of z will be g plus j omega c right so you can see here it is have it will be in the complex form so this will be of the form alpha plus j beta form if you solve this so this is given by gamma so where this gamma is called as the propagation constant so this is called as propagation constant this tells how the propagation is happening in the line how it is going to affect so here these two parameters are there one is alpha this alpha is called as attenuation constant and the value of beta is called as the phase constant because of the beta the value of the phase is going to change we are going to prove in the coming classes and the units of this will be radians per unit length so how much radians effect will be there per unit length so now what i am doing i am differentiating equation number 6 so if you are differentiating equation number 6 so i can write it as a dv by dx this will be equal to a into e to the power of gamma x differentiation will be gamma into e to the power of gamma x and differentiation of e to the power of minus gamma x will be minus gamma into e to the power of minus gamma x so this will become minus b into gamma into e to the power of gamma x this i am taking as i into z this i into z we got from equation number Four. So because we know that this dv by dx is equal to iz, so this dv by dx is nothing but iz. This is from equation number four. From equation number four. That's why I have equated here. So now from this I can calculate my value of the current i is equal to. I am just defining the term z c here. A e to the power of gamma x minus b u to the power of minus gamma x. Let us take this as equation number. Seven. So, how what is ZC? So, what is ZC? Because I is equal to gamma divided by Z. So, this is ZC is equal to Z divided by gamma. 
this what is there so z divided by gamma is square root of y into z so this becomes square root of z divided by y square root of z divided by y so this is called as characteristic impedance of the line characteristic impedance of the line so let us assume the line length is taken as l so let us assume the numerator denominator i can multiply with l so this i can write as small z into l divided by small y into l this will be square root of nothing but capital z divided by capital y so this is a ratio of impedance divided by impedance and you can see here as the length is both in the numerator as well as denominator because that means we can tell that it is independent of the length as it is independent of the length of the line so that's why it is called as characteristic impedance of the line it indicates what is the characteristic of my transmission line generally practically if you are taking the copper conductor and the insulation is proper then the value of the resistance as well as leakage current the leakage current can be neglected so only parameters that will remain is the inductive reactance as well as the capacitive reactance if you are taking that then in that case that is called as surge impedance of the transmission line the details of which we are going to see in the coming class generally the characteristic impedance of the transmission line practically will be 400 for overhead lines and this value will be equal to 40 for underground cables so why it is like this what is the reason we are going to see in the next class i will discuss in detail there so now let us proceed further so i got some equations i got the equation for i i got the equation for v so here we don't know the value of a we don't know the value of b so i want to calculate my value of a and b for that i am substituting my initial conditions so what i am using i am using limiting conditions that is at x is equal to 0 v is equal to vr and and i is equal to ir and putting in equation number 6 and equation number 7 so when i are putting this you this vr will become equal to a plus b and the value of ir when you are keeping in equation number 7 this will become a minus b divided by zc so this is what we obtain so from this i can calculate the value of a is equal to vr plus ir zc divided by 2 and the value of b will be equal to vr minus ir zc divided by 2 vr minus ir zc divided by 2 so now this i am substituting in equation number 6 the voltage equation for calculating that we can tell that the voltage equation v is equal to a e to the power of gamma x so this will become vr plus ir zc divided by 2 e to the power of gamma x plus vr minus ir zc remember here all these are the phasor quantities ir zc divided by 2 e to the power of minus gamma x this is what we obtain so this will be equal to vr into wherever the vr component is there i am taking out so this will become e to the power of gamma x because one is here second one is here plus e to the power of minus gamma x divided by 2 that is for vr and second parameter i am taking out ir zc is there ir zc into e to the power of gamma x minus e to the power of minus gamma x divided by 2 this is what we obtained so this i can write is vr into cos h of gamma l hyperbolic function plus ir zc into sin h of gamma x so let us take this as equation number 8 this is my value of the voltage so this will be useful later on we will discuss there now in the similar way we can simplify equation number 7 that means the current equation also if you simplify i am directly writing the answer to save time you can just derive it and check it you will get the same answer in the similar procedure so you will get a vr by zc into sin h of gamma x plus ir into cos h of gamma x this is what we obtain this i am taking as equation number 9 now if you want to calculate the sending and voltage and current equations can be obtained by 
so how you can obtain that value of x is equal to l at the sending end x is equal to l in equation number 8 and equation number 9 so when you are keeping in equation number 8 and 9 so this becomes vs is equal to vr into cos h of gamma l plus zc into ir sin h of gamma l so this i can take as equation number 10 so similar way i can take my value of is is equal to vr by zc into sin h of gamma l plus ir into cos h of gamma l so this is obtained as equation number 11 so now try to calculate the abcd parameters we know abcd parameters we will write that vs is equal to a times of vr plus b times of ir and is is equal to c times of vr plus d times of ir so i can compare equation number 10 and 11 with equation number 12 and 13 so when you are comparing these two equations i will get the value of a is equal to d is equal to cos h of gamma l this is what we obtain then we also obtain here the value of b will be equal to zc into sin h of gamma l this is the value of b similarly the value of c will be 1 by zc into sin h of gamma l so we got the a b c d parameters so the a b c d parameters are obtained so using this a b c d parameters if you know the value of the receiving and para values you can calculate your sending and values using these equations now in some cases it may be given that sending and values are given you want to calculate the receiving and values so in that case we again studied in the two port networks in network analysis that vr and ir can be written as d minus b minus c a of vs and is because you already know the value of abcd just substitute these values you can calculate vr and ir if vs and is is given and one more thing in the transmission line always a will be equal to d and ad minus bc is equal to 1 so whatever you are deriving in the exam you can cross verify whether ad minus bc is coming equal to 1 or not and a is equal to d so these conditions will be satisfied always for transmission line i hope the basic derivation of the transmission and abcd parameters is clear to you so next class we are going to discuss about the surge impedance as well as the surge impedance loading of a transmission line so after that we will go for nominal pi and nominal t represent of a transmission line for evaluating the transmission line performance that means for calculating the regulation as well as efficiency how to represent the transmission line in the form of nominal pi or nominal t what is the correlation between these two and after that followed by we will go for the wave equation of a transmission line how the wave is traveling at 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second and all the remaining things we will derive there in the coming classes i hope all these things are clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much